Patriots win a thriller on Thursday night football. They go into Pittsburgh and defeat the 7-5 and five Steelers 21-18. to And New England improves their 2023 record to 3-10. and I am Nick Roloff, host of Patriots Today. Welcome in. And we have a lot to discuss on today's postgame show because a lot of draft implications and maybe some future implications as well as do the Patriots actually have their franchise quarterback? I don't want to go too far, but you have to wonder after this performance if New England has something cooking for the future. Listen, Bailey Zappi was absolutely terrific in this game. 240 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. The one interception got deflected in the air, intercepted by Michael Walker. Should have thrown another one, but was dropped by Joey Porter Jr. But nonetheless... Bailey Zappi had 196 of those yards in the first half of this game. Also tossed for the three touchdowns in the first half. I will say this, the second half, second half offense excuse me, was absolutely abysmal. Scored no points, got no ball movement on the offensive end. You're lucky you were able to spot yourself a 21-3 lead at that second quarter midway through, and you're able to hold on a Steelers team that blew a lot of chances and really shot themselves in the foot the majority of this game themselves. But you do win your third game, and the question has to be asked is, like, where was this Patriots offense all year long? Because the Steelers' defense is no slouches. They're talented. They could get after the pass rusher. Yes, Alex Highsmith left the game with an injury, who's one of their better players. T.J. Watt was in and out of the lineup uh, with his injury as well. He actually got hurt on the first play of this game, which really limited what they could do defensively. But Zappi was able to shred this Steelers defense for the first 30 minutes of this game, at least. Juju Smith-Schuster had led the team in receiving with 90 yards on four catches, including a 37-yarder on the first possession of the game, which set up that opening drive touchdown for New England, which really got things rolling for the Patriots in this one. Zeke Elliott was fantastic on the ground and in the air, honestly. Zeke had 22 carries for 68 yards, no touchdown, but had seven catches for 72 yards and a touchdown through the air. Zappi dunked it down to Zeke quite a bit in this game, and it was good to see the old veteran from Dallas show that he still has some pep in his step in this win and we got to show some love to the birthday boy as well Hunter Henry he had three catches for 40 yards and two touchdowns including a really sick grab down the sideline that Zappi layered it right over the safety that was crashing in it was probably the best throw by a Patriots quarterback all year long laid it right over Hunter Henry great concentration to make that catch but the real question is as we just went through some of those stats here is not do the Patriots have something in the future? Because honestly, I like what I saw out of Zappi today, but if we seriously think he's going to be our franchise quarterback, we got bigger issues. I get that there's a lot of issues on this Patriots team. O-line has been up and down. I kind of think they play pretty well. They only gave up two sacks tonight. There's obviously wide receiver issues. The fact that the Patriots were able to win a football game, by the way, with their top three wide receivers being Tyquan Thornton, Juju Smith-Schuster, and Jalen Rager shows a lot about the fight in this team in week 14 when they're 2-10. and 10. Um, And obviously the quarterback position. And I think Zappi is too limited athletically and physically to be a franchise quarterback. It's just how I feel. I think Zappi is very smart. He also is really good inside the pocket. There's no denying that. Zappi's ability to move around in the pocket, whether it be right, left, stepping up, get to the back of his drop, hit that black leg on the plant, and step up and get his body into a throw and read the defense while evading some pass rush. Those are fine, but he's not the most athletic in terms of mobility. He's also not the most talented in terms of arm strength. The problem in this league is you're not going to win a lot of meaningful football games when you don't have a quarterback that is mobile or athletically gifted with his arm. When you think of the top quarterbacks in the NFL, Mahomes, Allen, Jalen Hurts, Lamar, um, Joe Burrow, all these guys have one thing in common, and they are elite at something. As good as Zappi played today, I'm not going to point to the heavens and say this is our franchise quarterback and he's some elite QB that we need to build around. I don't think that's the case. I think what Zappi proved today, though, is that he can be an efficient backup in this league and fill in for a starter if he ever got hurt. I mean, I'm not saying Zappi should start. I think he just proved to himself and to the Patriots organization 
that he can easily be a backup for the future. That's my thoughts on the game and the Bailey Zappi future, because I know that's going to be a main topic in this New England Patriots postgame. We're going to talk about the draft implications on this win in just a moment. But first, I got to show some love to today's sponsor, and that is Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for first deposit match up to $100. I play Prize Picks every single day. So does rapper Meek Mill. So does comedian Andrew Schultz and millions of others in North America. It's my favorite daily fantasy sports app for good reason. And even though I lost my selections tonight with Trubisky, 181 and a half passing yards, and 156 and a half passing yards for Zappi. I took the less down on both of those. Even though I lost, it doesn't matter because with that $100 first deposit match I got, I still got some money in the bank that I'm going to continue to play on a daily basis. Just pick two to six player stat projections. And if you go six for six, you can watch the winnings roll in. That link and promo code will be in the comments and description of today's video. So one more time, prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. All right, let's look at the NFL draft order because this is obviously the main topic moving forward for the New England Patriots is they're not going to make the postseason. I know there's technically a way they make it at 7-10, and 10, but let's be real here. That's not going to happen. With this win, they still hold the number two pick, which is the good news because I still think they need to draft a quarterback like Caleb Williams, like Drake May, the ones that are 6'4", 6'2", talent and athletically gifted that can really turn a franchise around with their playmaking ability inside the pocket and outside the pocket. And with this win, obviously, they moved to a 3-10 record. The Cardinals are on bye this week, so their record's going to stay at 3-10. Obviously, the Bears play, or excuse me, the Panthers play. The Commanders will play. Actually, they're on a bye too, so I'm wrong about that. And the Bears will play. But nonetheless, the Patriots still hold the number two pick in this draft because of the strength of schedule tiebreaker. So, theoretically, even though New England got this one, hurt the Steelers' playoff chances, which is very nice, and even if you are rooting for Team Tank, it's also good to see a Patriots win and snapping a five-game losing streak. If the Patriots lose their final four games and finish the year 3-14, and 14, they will still have a top-two pick in this draft, which is big-time news. I get it. It's nice to see the Patriots win. You never want to root for losses, no matter how bad the team is. But for the future of this franchise, it is imperative that New England finishes with a top two pick. I don't care if some of you are out on Drake May, which, by the way, I think that's wild to be out on the North Carolina quarterback because he's got a Justin Herbert pro comparison. He's got a rocket arm. He's mobile. I don't get the hate on Drake May that some Patriots fans give him. I get Caleb Williams. I'd rather have him because he is that type of Mahomes player. But you're not going to get the number one overall pick. So now we want to finish number two to take the quarterback out of Chapel Hill. The Patriots lose out. They'll have the tiebreaker due to strength of schedule, even if Arizona loses out. So losing out gets you a top two pick. And if you look at the remaining schedule for New England, we'll include today's game because it's not completely updated. They obviously won this game. You were at home against Kansas City next week. It was originally a Monday night football game, but the Patriots and Patrick Mahomes were flexed out of prime time in favor of other teams, and they moved the Patriots to the day slot. They play the Broncos on Sunday night football, Christmas Eve, in Denver, at Buffalo in Week 17. I'm going to be honest, even though the Patriots showed some life today and they won today's game, these three right here, they're absolutely losses. I'm not going to be blinded by beating a bad Steelers team, and I don't care that they're 7-6. and six. They're a bad team, especially with Mitch Trubisky at quarterback. You're going to lose the next three. Um, be optimistic, be not optimistic, or pessimistic, I should say. They're going to lose the next three games. They are. This is the type of team they are. And now you have to wonder if the Cardinals lose out, and they're 3-13 and going into the final week. This game at home against the New York Jets could decide whether the New England Patriots draft number two or number three. Yes, that is being dead serious. That game will have massive implications in week 18. It could be the difference between the Patriots drafting second and getting Drake May, or it could be the difference in them picking third or worse, depending on how the commanders finish up, how the Bears finish up. If they finish with four wins, who knows how those tiebreakers will go. And maybe the Patriots end up picking around that 5-6 selection, which would be an absolute nightmare scenario, because you're not in range to draft Marvin Harrison Jr., and I don't think Jaden Daniels 
is a guy at five or six, I'd be willing to take to turn this franchise around. I love Jaden Daniels. I think he's QB3, and Harrison Graham and I have been the leaders of the Jaden Daniels fan club, but I think his range is more 8 to 15. I would not take him in the top six whatsoever. So I think you need to finish top three to take either Marvin Harrison Jr. or Drake May, and that's how the final four games end up for the New England Patriots in quarter three and ten. Make sure you subscribe and turn on those notifications, whether it be myself, Nick Roloff, or me and Harrison Graham, bringing you guys a Patriots YouTube video. We are going to have you updated on all things New England, whether it be about Bill Pelichick coaching rumors in the offseason, whether it be about free agency rumors as New England slotted to have about 76 to $90 million in cap space where they will be active in March. And then the NFL draft, obviously the main topic for New England right now, surrounding that quarterback position. We'll have you covered better than anyone else on YouTube. So hit that sub button, join us, and turn on those notifications so you never miss a thing of Patriots football. I'll see you the next time on Patriots Today. Nick Roloff, go Pats. Thank you.